morning. Good morning. Welcome to our daily devotions with Pastor Sutton. Glad to have you here with us on this Tuesday morning, February 21st. It is a snowy day in Wisconsin. We had um, quite a bit of snow. Well, I mean, what's quite a bit of snow? An inch or more? Yeah. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't snowmageddon yet, but it's winter part two, and there's supposed to be more coming. Um, I managed to walk outside yesterday uh, to get in my truck. Where was I going? I was oh, I was taking Alexander over to drop him off to go to the the uh, forensics event, the forensics contest in Rib Lake, which, by the way, he and his partner did really well at. They took a 21, a 24, and a 25 out of 25 in the three performances. So they did they did excellent, an average of a little over 23 for the sub-district competition. So they're going on to the district competition, I guess, now, and then to state. And I think they'll make state. But I was going to say this, being older sucks when you fall. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. And I stepped out on the driveway, a little bit of snow, over the ice just enough to not see anything that's under the snow and you know brain said we're going just fine just keep walking i took the next step and before i knew it my feet were above my head and i was on my back looking up uh, so it hurts a little bit today and you know it, i used to fall and it didn't hurt now it hurts it takes a day or two to re recover from it so um yeah yeah so yeah, I winkle this morning. I don't think I'm going to go because it just hurts. Um, try and see a chiropractor. Anyway, good morning. Glad you're here with us on this Tuesday morning. I'm going to refresh because I've got more people viewing than there we go. The comments have filled themselves out now. Um, and we'll see who is with us on this morning. Mushtaq, good morning and good evening to you there in. Karachi, glad to hear from you, brother. Glad, uh, glad you're continuing to do the work you do there. Jerry, good morning. 40 degrees and breezy in Michigan. 40 degrees. You know, it makes me think. I just I saw a post before we got going here. I was just flipping through my news feed, and uh, one of my friends, Pastor Herzberg, his wife uh, posted something down. They're down in uh, mid to South Illinois district. And they were out kayaking yesterday. Kayaking. I used to water ski when I lived by La Crosse on the mighty Mississippi. And the water ski season went from, well, for us, because we were kind of young and stupid, went from uh, from from the first, uh, May Day, right, May 1st. Uh, as long as the ice was off the water on May 1st, um, we'd throw on, well, at first we'd throw on, uh, jeans and t-shirts or long underwear or something to keep us warm because the water was so cold um, just to get out and water ski right away in the year beginning of the year then we found we found out about wetsuits that changed the whole game um, uh, but May 1st and then to go to October 30th we try to try to water ski out till October 30th which can be pretty cold also and uh, not anymore mm, no but to be kayaking on the 20th of February Definitely different weather, only, what, 500 miles south of here, maybe? So, yeah, 40 degrees over in Michigan. Wonderful. Jill and John, good morning. I bet all that snow's melting, Jerry. Uh, Verna, good morning. Kathy, good morning. The nice thing about the wind is if, it, if stuff's melting, that'll help dry it out. Jeannie and Bob, good morning. Glenn, hello and good morning. Michael, good morning to you and Karen. Headed for 71 degrees with a foot of yeah, not a good day to be out on the boat, huh? Um, one foot chop, good boating day. Yeah, that's sarcasm, I'm guessing. Um, there's Glenn saying good morning again. Geraldine and Neil, good morning. Ann and Deb and Grant, well, Ann and Deb anyway, good morning. Grant, if you're nearby. Kendra, good morning to you. Yeah, Fat Tuesday for those that do those kinds of things clear out all the uh, sugar and fats in your house today and prepare for for the uh, Lenten um, the Lenten fast that comes up here yeah today is the the last day uh, before for before Lent begins you know and some of you really like the um, 
goofy donuts that are made at this time of year. They're, I, I can't call them donuts. They're punchkies or whatever you want to call them. Um, usually a fruit filling. Uh, but, you know, the first time I got one, I was expecting a Persian, right? A sweet donut dough um, filled with fruit uh, with powdered sugar on it. Uh, and, and what I got was what tasted like a, a bread dough filled with fruit with powdered sugar. And it's, no, I don't want that. Um, so I'm happy for you, but they feel a little bit like the penance is already beginning. So no, I'll, I'll go get myself a quick trip, uh, chocolate donut with chocolate cream filling with a chocolate topping. That'll be a chocolate long john with chocolate topping and chocolate cream. That'll, that'll, that'll fix me. Just one of those and I'll, I'll be done. So, all right. Well, good morning, everybody uh, that's here with us, everybody in the background, uh, everybody watching later today uh, here or on Facebook. Um, I guess the magic words are uh, like, share, subscribe, right? And you guys can do that, whether you're here on Facebook with me um, or, or over on YouTube, feel free to, to like and share. And, and uh, you know, if you think what I'm saying is worth hearing by other people, share it. It's God's word. It's meant to be shared. Not everybody will agree with it. Not everybody will like it. But that's not the point. The point is Christ speaks. So let's get down into what we've got here today. If you have the Lutheran Service Book, page 295, Daily Prayer for Individuals and Families. The morning order that we use, I have my treasury of daily prayer right here before my eyes. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our psalm today, Psalm, uh, mm, uh, mm, what? That's not right. Our psalm today is Psalm 84, verses 1 through 4 and 8 through 12. All right, guys, this is, you're just going to have to give me a minute here because I, because I think I forgot as, as I was prepping, and it's kind of important. I don't know if it's important or not, but um, you get to look at my ugly mug while I'm typing here. And okay. Oops, that's not right. Uh, one, one through four, eight through 12. And as long as I did that, I'm, gonna, I'm betting I forgot. Yeah, I forgot to change the, the reading today. Also, yeah, I've got it right in the description, but um, I think I got into other things like looking at my news feed and forgot to update this other stuff. There we go. Psalm 84, Psalm 84, 1 through 4 and 8 through 12. Now it's right on the screen. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts. My soul longs, yes, faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and flesh sing for joy to the living God. Even the sparrow finds a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young. At your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Blessed are those who dwell in your house, ever singing your praise. O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob. Behold our shield, O God. Look on the face of your anointed. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those who walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the one who trusts in you. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, will be forever. Amen. You know, the, the order of Matins, the responsory, um, uh, forever, O Lord, your word is a, 
no, that's not. It. But, the, but the response to it, the the the, the um, refrain or the sung response, Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Okay, I'm out of tune. Um, but it's true. I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts. Um, I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of God. You know, have that that lowest position amongst all the servants of the house, if it was the Lord's house, uh, than to be um, the master or steward of all things. Um, it would be a blessing. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the one who trusts in you. All right. We'll continue with our, our reading here from Job, continuing on uh, in the book of Job, chapter 16 now, verses 1 through 22. Uh, Job is making a reply to his friends again, um, <laughs> telling them that they're not much help in the midst of his misery. Then Job answered and said, I have heard many such things. Miserable comforters are you all. I sh sh or shall windy words have an end? Or what provokes you that you answer? I also could speak as, d as you do. If you were in my place, I could join words together against you and shake my head at you. I could strengthen you with my mouth, and the solace of my lips would assuage your pain. If I speak, my pain is not assuaged. And if I forbear, how much of it leaves me? Surely now God has worn me out. He has made desolate all my company, and he has shriveled me up, which is a witness against me. And my leanness has risen up against me. It testifies to my face. He has torn me in his wrath and hated me. He has gnashed his teeth at me. My adversary sharpens his eyes against me. Men have gaped at me with their mouth. They have struck me insolently on the cheek. They mass themselves together against me. God gives me up to the ungodly and casts me into the hands of the wicked. I was at ease, and he broke me apart. He seized me by the neck and dashed me to pieces. He set me up as his target. His archers surround me. He slashes open my kidneys and does not spare he pours out my gall on the ground. He breaks me with breach upon breach. He runs upon me like a warrior. I have sewed sackcloth upon my skin and have laid my strength in the dust. My face is red with weeping and on my eyelids is deep darkness. Although there is no violence in my hands and my prayer is pure. O earth, cover not my blood and let my cry find no resting place. Even now, behold, my witness is in heaven, and he who testifies for me is on high. My friends scorn me, my eye pours out tears to God, that he would argue the case of a man with God as a son of man does with his neighbor. For when a few years have come, I shall go the way from which I shall not return. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Uh, good stuff. Good stuff. Just updating here in case anybody jumped in. Um, God gives me up to the ungodly and casts me into the hands of the wicked. And I guess we could say, I don't guess, that is a fair assessment, isn't it? I mean, it was in the throne room of God that Satan came wandering in, and God said to Satan, what have you been up to? And he said, well, I've been wandering to and fro on the earth. And it was God who said, have you seen my servant Jacob, or my, my servant Job? He is a faithful and upright man. It was a, ch a challenge to the devil. Have you seen this guy who's faithful to me? A devil was the one who said, well, yeah, but, but Lord, you put a hedge around him. You protect him. You've given him good things. And, and if all that was taken from him, he would 
turn and curse you. Okay, go do it. And and and, and the old wicked foe does it, and, and Job doesn't turn, and God come, he comes back to God and says, yeah, but you're still protecting him. He hasn't suffered enough. God says, fine, you can do whatever you want. You may lay your hand upon him, but you may not kill him. You may not take his life. It is not yours to take. And so he gets the boils, and he's in the ash heap, scratching. And yet he does not still does not turn to God. Yes, he wants to bring his complaint before God. Yes, he wants to say to God, why me? For what reason? What purpose is being fulfilled by the suffering that I am enduring? Why have you, why have you let people surround me? Right? Job says, I've heard what you three and others are saying that you're accusing me of being wicked, that, that you're saying that, that my circumstance and my situation has been brought on by myself. And even if I defend myself, if I speak, my pain is not assuaged. My defense against you doesn't make me feel any better. It doesn't improve my situation. And if I, if I don't speak, if I hold my tongue, if I forbear, how much pain leaves me? None, none. And he even, he even puts the blame for his suffering where it belongs. Surely now God has worn me out. He has made desolate all my company, shriveled me up, which is a witness against me. And my leanness has risen against me. It testifies to my face. He has torn me in his wrath and hated me. He has, he has, done all this. God gives me up to the ungodly and casts me into the hand of the wicked. I was at ease and he broke me apart. I was living the good life. Things were good. I was faithful to God, still being faithful to God. And he cast me in the hands of the wicked. He broke me apart, seized me by the neck and dashed me to pieces. He allowed these things to come up, set me up as a target. did. God did it. It's God's will. We are all God's creation. We are all in his hands. He can do with us at his, as he wills. And as I've said again and again and again, as we read this text, he tests us. He allows testing to come upon us. He knows, Job knows, he knows from where the suffering comes, how it's been allowed. But he knows that God still protects him. He knows that life in this world is not the end. He knows that beyond this is God. That, that suffering in faith is righteousness. My friends scorn me, my eyes pour out, I pours out tears to God. That he would argue the case of a man with God. Let my cry find no resting place. Even now, behold, my witness is in heaven. My faithfulness is with God. My face is red with weeping, my eyelids deep in darkness, although there is no violence in my hands. I have not raised my hand to anyone who has allowed or caused or insulted me. And my prayer is pure. For when a few years have come, I shall go the way from which I shall not return. I will go to the Lord. That's the promise we have. Whatever it is. And you know, our suffering in this world can be great, but it is only for a time. It is only for a time. And Christ does not leave us, nor does he desert us. He feeds us with his body and blood. He calls us to our baptism and reminds us that we've been forgiven of our sins and that we now dwell in him. And he guards us and keeps us until our last day when we are with him. No matter what we face, 
He does not deserve us, nor desert us, nor leave us. Do we deserve the suffering we have? Oh, yes, and much more. What we don't deserve is Christ, but he has come. He has saved us. He gives us strength. Thanks be to God that he sent his only son to die for you. And in his death, gives you the promise of life everlasting. Takes away your sin. Suffers for you. Even greater suffering than you have. So that your suffering will end. And you'll be with him. Today, all we do is pray. And we ask God for mercy. And we know that he provides it. Our prayer is pure. Amen. Let's look to the prayer of the day here. Uh, here. Lord Jesus Christ, your time has come. For you have traveled to Jerusalem for the Passover from death to life. Help us to live knowing that the time of our redemption is at hand as you continue to dwell among us at the feast of your very body and blood, a foretaste of the feast to come. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I don't think we continue in Job. I think tomorrow we'll be, be in something else. I think I go to the front. I've got to look here and find out. I asked you guys if you had suggestions of what you might like for Lent. Now you're going to get what you get. Let us continue with the... Uh, I need a sip of coffee. Let us continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we are bold to pray as our Lord taught us, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And for ourselves and others on this, on this morning. With grateful heart, I rise to praise you, O Lord, my God, for you have refreshed me with a restful sleep and given me your grace to see the dawn of the new day. You have also made this day. It is yours. Grant that every word I utter and every act I perform will reveal your presence in my life. Make me thoughtful and considerate at work and keep me patient with those who irritate me. Remove all malice and resentment from my heart and enable me to bear with serenity the unpleasant situations which I cannot change. Protect me from temptation and allurements of sin, from doubt and worry, from lovelessness and strife. Throughout this day, enrich my life with your benedictions. Protect me from accident and harm and bring me safely home at the end of the day for the sake of my Lord, who is even my Savior. Christ. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we also ask your blessing upon those who suffer, whether it be in body, mind, or soul, especially this day praying for Pat, Lois, Anne, Brianne, Rose, Bob, Mike, Megan, Dan, Ezra, Neely, Jeremy, Ashley, John, Renee, Shazad, and all who call upon your most holy name. Be also with those in Turkey and Syria as they suffer the effects of another earthquake. Be with those people in the Ukraine and Russia. It's not their fault that war looms around them, but guard them and keep them safe. Turn them by your Holy Spirit to the message of your gospel and the promise of relief that comes only from you. Grant that there be peace in all our nations, giving wisdom to the leadership of all nations, not any wisdom or the wisdom of the world, but your wisdom from which 
all peace comes. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh oh, there we go. Oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, my friends, I froze up there for a minute maybe, but uh, my apologies for that. It looks like the signal dropped out completely there for an instant. Hey, Fat Tuesday, as Glenn reminded us, and so, you know, go get a donut or have something silly. Um, and uh, if you decide to celebrate a fast during the 40 days of Lent, may God bless that action, and, and may it strengthen your faith. That is the purpose for it in your understanding that God gives you all things through Christ Jesus. Um, and we'll be back here tomorrow, um, the morning of Ash Wednesday. Technically, Ash Wednesday doesn't start till the midday uh, midday um, service, the, the mid, what would be the mid hour of the day, noon. Um, it used to be that all the services were about one o'clock, um, but uh, we'll be celebrating Ash Wednesday here at St. Paul tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Um, the uh, order, the, the Ash Wednesday order of service with the imposition of ashes, corporate confession and absolution um, and, uh, and uh, the Lord's Supper. Tomorrow we'll be doing it uh, at faith. Um, Wednesdays are on Thursday <laughs> up at my congregation in Harshaw. There we'll be doing the same thing, but at 4.30 in the afternoon. So. God's peace be with you, and uh, join me back here tomorrow morning and see what we're up to. God's peace.